out of the motorway service station jets, looking up through the base all leaves of a thistle. Where are the roots of any moment, boys? Bikers rev under the railway bridge. Watercress holds the fluency of the stream in its green jumper. Step in, slip into me. Don't get me wrong. I am nowhere drawn into patterns. A mosaic of morphemes at your fingertips. The written word at the back of the vibration without breath. The seal breathes in the estuary as the water moves around it, eddying, layered, breathing into the land. Receiving the breath of the river. There, I have made it. And the flame or feather before the lips of nowhere has not stirred. Synthetic voices uh, singing. But I must have said this before, since I say it now. Non-word synthetic speech. But I must have said this before, since I say it now. The expressive capabilities of the uh, text-to-speech synthesizer. Those voice sounds can also carry a huge amount of meaning. Speaking without words. Interaction as a pathway into communication. This is an example of voice cloning. This is an example of voice cloning. Comparing an original voice with the synthetic version. Comparing an original voice with the synthetic version. Here, we don't really want a synthesized voice. What we want is a sound that gives words um, that will really go beyond the capabilities of the human voice, that can do things that we've never heard before. Change the voice and then jump to another place on the table, mm. in theory. Oh, no, no, those, those names are hard to ID. What you're talking about is a, is a variable. Yeah. yeah. That you can... It generally only comes up with no match at the moment if you if you cough loudly or go like, or breathe really loudly yeah. uh, into the mic and it then can't detect anything that looks like speech. So I assume there's bugs in here and we'll find them as we go. That's, I think, our main task for the following few days, mm -hmm. is to just exercise this with whatever words we've got, whatever table entries, but we should become, the people in this room here should become comfortable with mm -hmm. making changes to the table. So the first one that a user will write is this right here. This is the start of the step. Well, so I, I guess the best thing to do, the user should copy an yes. entire state, cut and paste, and then modify it, rather yeah. than try and type sure. it out. Yes. So basically, it's already, Sorry. if you put state, Zero, one, plus one, or minus three, it will use the type step. If my user says this, then change the emotion in this way and jump to this. Mm -hmm. Every time it reads, it reads the whole state. Okay, this is the and transition that we don't have implemented. It may be lighting up the signs behind. Them, oh dear, yeah. yeah. yeah see if I so it it the bear bulb in here, it could be talking, and then we put different fixtures on it. somebody here that was an artist that could say that's so kitsch that it's perfect or could say well no that doesn't work no. oh, because that because that is quite uh, sort of fixed yeah. it's all yeah. 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 and we could hide the red lines inside yeah. or, or the <laughs> Thank you. 
do it, I do. Yeah, sorry. You go that way. You can bring it that way. Okay, stand by then please. Everybody happy? Roll camera. Thank you, and action. Do you go on the line of tapes then? I like to go on and all tape measures with the last. Pardon. Say one now. I mean, to be fair, this is more fun than just sitting outside in the sun, you know. <laughs> don't, don't answer that. It's been a great experience um, because we've brought together a, a, such a, a good group of people. I mean, we've been lucky, I guess. I mean, we've, we've got most, I think, of the of the uh, kind of prominent people working in this field in the UK, but also um, broader than that. My name is Jill Lane. I'm a speech and language therapist for uh, Plymouth CIC from Plymouth NHS. I'm Jim Gilbert from the University of Hull, Department of Engineering. Uh, my name is Lucy Lawson, I'm an independent speech and language therapist um, based in York. My name is Roger Moore, um, I'm a professor of spoken language processing at Sheffield University. My name is David Mason, I'm a director at Toby Churchill Limited. We're bringing together people from really quite a wide range of, of different backgrounds. So there are, the te there are the technologists, the people who actually build synthesizers, um, but there are also users, people who use synthetic speeches as their primary uh, form of communication. And then people who are interested in, well, what can you do with this technology in kind of artistic ways. Speak to me. Don't hang up. I have many algorithms to share with you. Look how your options glitter today, like rain on the washing line, petrol in the gutter, What's interesting about CREST is the sheer range of disciplines involved, not just sciences, but social sciences, psychology alongside with acting and sound design. It's, it's endless, really. The, the number of disciplines is truly beyond putting in a box anywhere. Well I've done. I'm busy now. No, I didn't recognize them now. I came back as yes, didn't I? Because yeah. yeah, it's not a word spot. And this is Hilda Brasso. I'm saying her because she's a spot. Most people know nothing about the issues involved with being an AAC user. I hope this project will help raise interest and awareness. The system we've got at the moment has sensors all around the front of the mouth, so it's on a big metal frame attached to a pair of glasses, which obviously is quite obtrusive. So what we're trying to do at the moment is, is shrink it down, make it smaller, less obtrusive, and ideally you know, something that is just like a, a Bluetooth earpiece. Um, we've done some consultation with, with potential users and, and the appearance is one of the big things, you know, uh, probably more important than the quality of the speech. Everyone can say that, but maybe it's a bit more important for me because it isn't my own. We have a film that we've produced that explores that very relationship that we were talking about. What is your voice to you? I thought it was just a dream. I decided to give it a go because I knew I'd regret it if I didn't. Our group 
has made an artifact to demonstrate what a voice means to its owner. Both people who use AAC in our short film and visitors to our roadshow stand are able to say what their voice really means to them. I don't think that people who have a natural voice realize what it would be like to lose their voice. Our stand invites visitors to write down what their voice means to them. I hope this makes people think. Yeah. 
is all over and for those of you who don't know me, you love me. I used to be a professional singer, an opera singer. You do sound upset, yes. I hate mayonnaise too. You really want to get to the park? What kind of prices? Oh, I see. No. So today is the first of three stagings of the road show. We'll be in Sheffield tomorrow and Hull on Wednesday. But the emphasis today has been particularly on one use of the technology, that is communication devices, usually known as alternative and augmentative communications, or AAC. So Articulate is showing some of the outcomes of this CREST network. CREST stands for Creative Speech Network. In 1996, four years after London, when I was 33, I made my first public dance performance. Afterwards, I felt like crying. chances of that. Three people with the same voice. Anyway, do you go on dates often? Not really. I get pancake attacks. <laughs> you what? Sorry. I meant panache attacks. <laughs> Stupid predictive text. I went panic attacks. My voice is the way I manage to stand out from the crowd. Hello, I am Lee Riley. Can I make it say my name properly? Ridley. Ridley. Hello, I am Lee Ridley, also known as Lost Voice Guy, and I am a stand up comedian. Lee Ridley is someone who is a very big part of this network and it's with huge pleasure that on your behalf I invite you to put your hands together to invite Mr. Lee Ridley onto the stage. Thank you, Lee! Lee. In case you were still in any doubt, I really am disabled. It's definitely not just really good acting. And I'm not just in it for the parking space. I lost my voice when I was very young and I haven't found it since. Don't you just hate it when that happens? 
I've looked everywhere for it. Down the back of the chair, in the washing machine, everywhere. On the bright side, I did find the television remote control, three pound in change and a used rubber johnny. That's now safely back in my wallet. As a society, we shouldn't be labeling people as disabled anyway. It's offensive and a huge waste of stickers. <laughs> Does it really matter how many disabled people are stuck on benefits? It's just going to make the next Paralympics easier to win. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Lost Voice Guy. If you find my voice, please contact me on my website or on my Facebook page. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Mm. Goodbye. <laughs> One of the fundamental things about Crest is that you are always forced back into dealing with experience, not understanding. And I think understanding has to come after experience, not, not before it.